In Romania, at the moment, um, they're trying to remove all the dogs off of the streets. People ask why there are so many dogs on the streets. This is because they don't neuter the dogs over there. Dogs are living on the streets, breeding, puppies are being born. Um, some people that own their dogs, will, the dogs will breed um, and they dump the puppies in horrible conditions. The streets are full. The dog catchers are going out collecting the dogs off of the streets and putting them in um, a shelter and this has a 28 day turnaround. I'm Kirsty and I am the founder um, and manager of Helping Dogs and Cats UK. I started Helping Dogs and Cats UK in August 2018 by accident. Okay, that's my dog. That's my dog as well. So. Um, I was fostering for another rescue um, that no longer exists. Um, in the land of rescue, you have a no-kill policy. This is something, so if um, a dog comes in and they've got anxiety, that is not a reason to put that dog to sleep. This rescue I found out was putting dogs to sleep. Um, I wasn't happy and there was 11 dogs um, ready to be put to sleep and I was only a fosterer. I didn't want that to happen. So I started up a business to keep these 11 dogs safe, which is what we've done. Once them 11 dogs were safe, my intentions were to close the rescue, continue with my day job, I just haven't ever got to that bit where it closed. There are other countries that are in the same situation. I have been to Romania myself. I have taken dogs out of kill shelters out there myself. That is one of the reasons that I have chosen Romania. It's a very beautiful country, don't get me wrong, but their love for animals isn't the same as what ours is over here. Our a proper goal is to bring them over find them the perfect home, the home that is going to love them like they deserve, give them any medical treatment and that they keep that dog forever. Oh God, she's massive. Oh my God. Oh, hi darling. Oh, she's so nervous. They are put onto a bus and they do travel for two to three days. The vans themselves are fully equipped with air conditioning. The drivers are amazing. I only use um, drivers that I trust. The first person that takes them off of the bus and takes them home with them, they love them forever. They, they are their saviour. We put applications up on the um, page and the website. They put in their application. We go through the applications um, and any of those that meet our, our criteria, which is we do not home dogs to flats above ground level, um, being the reason that we want them to have access to a garden. Um, we don't home to children um, under five and we don't home to families that work for longer than four hours um, unless we put a plan together of dog walkers and, and things like that. So we are very strict. Um, Katrina fitted the um, criteria. I rang her. Um, I had a wonderful chat with her on the phone. Um, we got on like a house on fire. She was just, she just wants to help. And that's what we need, people that just want to help. My name's Katrina and I've got Ollie on my lap and it's my husband Derek with Coco. We got him from the Dogs and Cat Rescue UK. Yeah. We haven't got very good, let me see if I can put the, ah, there we go. So the first night we picked him up around quarter to 12 in Southampton at night time. And basically the instructions were sort of less interaction because they're scared coming off the bus and it's dark. They didn't know where they were, totally new people, they've never been handled, put them straight in the crate and just basically settled them down. So we got home um, 
and we bathed him and we fed him. And I think someone described on the group chat, it's like a game of hungry hippos and they were just like waffing the food down. They were so hungry. He went for a toilet break um, and then we gave him a bath. So all the stress was done, which is what we got told to do um, that night. So I think it was about half past three Sunday morning that we went to bed by the time they were settled down and met the animals and sort of into their own crates. Dogs are coming back, but they have to be brought back now. But those owners have had the dog for a year, but they're all of a sudden they're allergic. All of a sudden their marriage is broken up. Some of them are genuine reasons that those dogs need to come back. Um, a lot of the adopters are good in the respect that they will wait until we found somewhere, but some don't, and they want that dog gone now. So Flora, um, she came over as a small little puppy. Um, we knew that she'd had some sort of trauma to her eye. Um, it was looked at um, in, by the vets over there um, and she was on drops and creams and, and things like that. Uh, as time got, went on, the eye started to bulge um, and you could see that she was in a lot of discomfort. So myself and other team members decided to take it back to the vet and see what they wanted to do. They advised having the eye taken out. Yeah. We're a non-profitable organisation, so we, we don't have unlimited funds. Um, so yeah, we done a fundraiser. We managed to raise all of the money to have her eye removed, um, but then we struggled to rehome her because she wasn't the perfect puppy. <laughs> When I found out her history, I was just going through a major operation myself. So I was down and I kind of like clicked with her and thought, she's down, she's just had a major operation, she needs the love. So I thought, we can give each other that, we can help each other regain our confidence and that's exactly what she's done. She's helped me and I've helped her. So Derek was cleaning his car and then when we did all the home checks, Kirsty called me back and said, um, so you're going to go for Coco, that's great, we can get seven of the eight pups home. <laughs> and I thought, well, what's happening to the eighth pup, which was Ollie? And she said, we haven't got anyone to take him. And that's how we ended up with two, because I said, no, you're not leaving him. You're not leaving him in that situation. And it's bleak and it's raw rescue. It's not like the UK dogs are already cared for, they've got warmth, they've had a cuddle, they've had a walk, they've had interaction. These guys have had nothing. I think Coco, to me, seems like the big brother to Ollie. Whatever he was more confident in, Ollie was sort of in the background a little bit. We were sort of aware of that little bit that he wasn't as confident. Um. So anyway, we put the leads on them and they were fine putting the leads on. Um, carried them out into the garden and we just basically let them sniff because it's got indigo scent in the garden, so it's all new for them. They needed to kind of know that they were okay to use that garden as well. Indigo sort of uh, shines them very quickly. So you can see both of them weren't too unsure outside. One was more confident than the other. I think Ollie came out more of himself outside, he would indoors and sort of um, Coco was full in the, the leads then. But then Indigo was showing them lots of things and you are safe, you're in our garden and just constantly checking up on the two of them. So it is great to see these dogs happy and thriving. Watching from where these dogs have come from to where they go, it is just the best feeling. That's all we want as a rescue is happy dogs and happy cats. The difference that rescue animals make to families is amazing. <laughs>